Hey guys, today I'll be showing you how to apply this water splash effect to your text in Adobe Photoshop so that you can use it for your own text or logo and upload it to your social media. All right, let's do this. So we can start by creating a new Photoshop document. I'll make this one 3000 by 3000 pixels, which is more than enough for a social media post. And we'll set the resolution to 72 pixels per inch and go with RGB for the color mode and hit OK. Now let's type in some text. You can also import a vector logo from Illustrator, but for this video, I'll just write down some text directly into Photoshop. So let's bring up the type tool by pressing T and we'll start typing our text. I'm just gonna go with the word splash. I'll be using a font called Din Condensed for this tutorial, but you can use any font you want. And just leave it black for now, it doesn't matter. Next, we can resize our text by pressing Command T or Control T on PC, and then grabbing one of these corners and pulling them out. And just make sure you hold shift while you do this so that you can resize your text proportionally. And then hit enter. Now I'm just going to align the text to my canvas using these smart guides. Alright, now that we have our text, we can go ahead and add in the splash. I added a download link to the video description so you guys can download the same image I'm going to be using. You can find different splash shapes on this website, so feel free to use whichever one you want. Once you've downloaded the image, you can go ahead and drag it to your Photoshop workspace. And then let's just resize it so that it covers most of our text. And again, remember to hold shift. And you can see that since this is a PNG file, it retains the transparency so that you can still see the text through the water even though the text layer is below. All right, this looks good enough. Now this is the tricky part. So we're gonna be saving two Photoshop documents. The first one is gonna be our main visual and the second one is gonna be used to map our text to the flow of the water. You'll see what I mean. So we'll save this first document by pressing Command S or Control S on PC. And you might wanna create a folder just to keep everything in the same place. So I'm gonna call this one main visual, but you can name it whatever you want. Next, we're going to save it again as a second Photoshop document, which we'll use for the displacement mapping. So let's go ahead and press Command, Shift and S or Control, Shift and S on PC to bring up the Save As menu. And I'll call this one Water Mapping and hit Save. Now let's edit this mapping PSD. So over here, we can either delete the text layer or just make it invisible by clicking this little eye icon. Next, we'll select the water layer and then go down here to the adjustment layers and select black and white. Now in the properties palette here, we're gonna take down the cyan and the blue values to boost the contrast of the image. I'll set my values to minus 40 for cyan and minus 50 for blue. Then I'm gonna go ahead and save this file by pressing Command S or Control S on PC. Once it's saved, you can close it and open up your main Photoshop document. All right, now let's select our text layer and then right click and select convert to smart object. Then we can edit the text color by going to layer styles and selecting color overlay. And then click on this color thumbnail. And over here you can choose a color by either using the color picker or by putting in a value. I'm gonna be using the hex value FF2C6C. Now let's just go ahead and move our text layer above the water layer. And then go to Filter, Distort, and then Displace. I'm going to set the value to 30 for both the horizontal and vertical scale. And leave Stretch to Fit and Repeat Edge Pixels checked and hit OK. And over here we can select this mapping PSD we created earlier and click Open. And as you can see, the text is now deformed following the shape of the water splash. And since the text shifted a little bit to the left, we can grab both of these layers and recenter them using the arrow keys. All right, so the effect is already starting to look pretty good. Now, what I wanna do is add a background color. So let's double click on the background layer to make it editable. And then I'll rename it to background and hit okay. Then let's go down to the layer styles and select gradient overlay. Now for the style, select linear and then set the angle to minus 45 degrees. And then click on the gradient here. 
Now we're going to set the colors we want to use for the gradient. So I'll start with this one to the right and just double click on this little color swatch. And I'll set the hex value to 48 DDA0 and hit OK. Then let's move on to this other color swatch to the left and set the color to D7F68B. Now it's a bit too yellow for me, so I'll just move this right slider towards the inside a bit. And this looks pretty good, so I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. Alright, so we're almost done. Now the last thing we want to do is change the color of the water so it feels a little bit more integrated with the background. So let's select the water layer and then go back to the adjustment layers and select hue and saturation. Then make sure you have the hue and saturation layer selected and go up here to layer and select create clipping mask. This way we'll be modifying the hue and saturation only for the water layer and not on all the layers underneath it. Now in the properties palette, I'll set the hue value to minus 43 and I'll leave the saturation and lightness at zero. So that's it guys. I really hope you enjoyed this video and as usual if you plan on posting this on Instagram make sure to tag me because I'd love to see what you guys come up with. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.